whenever you get into the presence of God, you will fall prostrate and say, I'm unworthy. Have you ever been in the presence of God where he broke you and you really see who he is? Think back to Moses in the burning bush. When Moses saw that burning bush, it was on fire, but yet not consumed. He said, I got to take off my shoes because I'm on holy ground. Are you on holy ground when you're in the presence of God? And Peter, or Simon Peter here, recognizes that Jesus Christ is Lord. He doesn't call him master anymore. He calls him Lord. What a change of titles. Did you see that? He calls him Lord. Because now he knows that this is the very Son of God. If you think that the huge load of fishes was the great miracle here, you missed it. The miracle here is that Simon Peter and those around him was caught by Jesus Christ. They finally saw who he was. Remember, Simon Peter was following him on the shore. But now Jesus was reeling him in. Reeling him in because we know he was reeling him in. Because here's what he says. Verse 9 says, For he was astonished at all that were with him at the drop of fishes that they were taken. And listen to what Jesus said. And also was James, John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Oh, don't miss this. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now, that is good. Don't miss that. Why did Jesus tell him to fear not? What was that? He was with them. Yeah. But remember, Jesus told him to launch out into the deep. He just recognized who God is. Whenever you recognize who God is, you have to deny yourself and now make sacrifices. And be 100% committed. God knows the heart. So no doubt he knew that Simon was afraid. Because now his life is going to be turned upside down. His work, his purpose was to fish. That means he was out there catching fish, selling them, making money, providing. But now, God, Jesus said, throw all of that away. And follow me. That's fearful. Because we're so stuck in our comfort zone. We love our little routines. Don't met, you know, I, I, I'll go along with the flow as long as I'm comfortable. But boy, when he makes you uncomfortable and you have to fully get into that boat and launch out into the deep, that's scary. That's why he was, he was telling Simon, fear not. Don't worry. I know this is going to change your life. But he told him, fear not. From henceforth, you shall catch men. Think about it. He was catching fish to die. Now he's catching dead men to live. Jesus said, greater things than these thou shalt do. Jesus went around healing people, healing the sick. But they were going to die. But now you're going out there telling people about Jesus Christ. They're dead. They're in darkness. And you're telling about Jesus Christ, you're raising the dead and you don't even know it. Think about it. They are dead men walking out there. But now you're talking and telling them about Jesus. They see that light and they accept him. And then they have eternity. We talked about the crown of glory. When you lead someone to Christ, you get that crown of glory. So now you're not going to just fish for dead fish. But you're going to be fishing for man. He's changing tunes here. And he has to be fully committed. Now, so Jesus already comforted him and tell him, fear not. And then, verse 11, 
What was Simon's response? And when he brought their ships to land, I hope you catch this pronoun here, they forsook all and followed him. If you follow Christ, others will as well. Simon followed them, but they forsook all. Are you willing to forsake all for Christ? The rich young ruler wasn't. The rich young ruler said, hey, I kept all of these Jewish things, all of the law, all these things. Jesus said, that's good. Yeah, that's good. But sell all that you have and follow me. He couldn't do it. He loved the world more than loving Christ. What shall a man gain if he lose his soul? What shall he gain? Nothing. Exactly. If you really think about the short time we're down here on the earth, like the Bible said, it really cannot be compared to what he has for us in glory. So we have to be willing to forsake all for Christ. So we're talking about the catch of a lifetime was that Jesus Christ actually caught the disciples. And now they're going to be rescuing men to live. Now, what was the purpose? Why was it so important to catch the fish? Or catch men? Here, I'm giving you a couple of scriptures, and I hope you write these down. Matthew 4.19. We're just going to go through a couple of scriptures, and I'll be done. Matthew 4.19. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. If you are not fishing for men, you're not following Christ. That is probably the easiest scripture to understand. He said, if you're following me, you're going to be fishing for men. Are you fishing for men? You have to ask yourself that question. Is it a priority in your life when you're going through the day that you're going to let your light shine to direct people to Christ? Or are you busy? Are you comfortable? You don't want to be bothered with anyone. This is a question for you. If you're following him, he said, I will make you fishers of men. I know... You know, I'm just so crazy, you know, just hung up on soul winning because it is the only thing he told us to do. Because, you know, he said he's going to make us fishermen. Let's keep going. Let's look at Luke 19.10. This is what he says here. Luke 19.10. Listen to this one. Luke 19.10. It says, for the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Whenever you're seeking for something, you ever lose something and you're going through the house and you're looking for it? Anybody done that? You're looking for it hard. Your main priority is to find what you lost. That is the attitude he wants us to take here. That he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's what we need to do. 1 Timothy 1.15 1 Timothy, I hope you're writing these down. 1 Timothy 1.15 It says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Wow. That was somebody recognizing what was going on. That they were a sinner. And that Jesus Christ came for the purpose of saving them. And if he did that, that's what we need to do. Wow. I got plenty. I'll keep going. I got a couple, two more I like to read here. Luke chapter 5. That in the same chapter where we're at. 31 to 32. Luke chapter 5. Verse 31 to 32. That's where we're reading. And Jesus answering and said unto them, 
Well, if you read the, the, go before this, he was the Pharisees, the doctors, the teachers. They start asking Jesus these questions. And boy, look at the response he gives them here. He said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Wow, goodness gracious. And Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Mark 16, 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow. That was Mark 15, 16. He told them to go into the world, and preach to every creature. So the title was Let's Go Fishing. I chose that title just because it says let's go because Jesus is going to go with you. And the key is go. Whenever you look at what Christ is telling us to do, it's always to go. He's always telling us to go, not to sit. He's always telling us to go. He said, will there be anyone that will go for me? And the prophet said, here am I, Lord. Send me. He'll do it. He will send you if you want to please him. You know, one of the things, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I don't have the skill to do this. You know, yeah, I don't have the skill. I haven't been taught. Well, you're supposed to be a witness. A witness simply tells what they saw or what happened to them. When you tell me you cannot witness, you simply told me you're not saved. Think about it. At the simplest terms, you can't, you pose a witness. Tell somebody what happened to you. Many a times I hate to tell you, it may not have happened. We are still following Christ on the shore and we haven't launched out into the deep. You know, John 15, 16 says this. And it says, ye have not chosen me. This is the good news. He said, you didn't choose me, but I have chose you. And listen to what he did. did he ordained you. Did you know you was ordained? Everybody want to be ordained by some man. But God has already ordained you. And what did he ordain you to do? That ye should go. There's that word again. You can't get around it. And bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father, in my name, he will give it you. Man, this is good. I want to summarize here real quickly. Is that Jesus Christ preached to the multitude that day. And after he was done with them, he dismissed them. He told Simon Peter to let's launch out into the deep. Simon Peter, he told him to drop down the net. Simon Peter said, it's not going to work. I toiled all night. In other words, I did it all myself, my flesh. But now, you're getting the unction from God himself saying, drop down the net. Simply obey God's word. And then he got a great load of fishes in the ship that was with him. And Christ was letting, then Simon Peter finally recognized that he was Lord. And then he, the, Jesus Christ told him to, now he's not going to be fishing for fish, but he was going to be fishing for men. And he told him to forsake all and follow me. And they did that. What will your response be? Christ is saying tonight, forsake all and follow me. Will you do it? We, we, we got a lot of things we're saying that we want to do this year. We want to prepare. But is Christ the center of those things? Or are we doing these things to do better for Him? If it's not, rethink it. Be committed to Christ. Launch out into the deep. You're never going to get to where you want to be on the shore. You must launch out into the deep. Let's pray. Father God, it is once again that we come, Lord, just thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to proclaim your word tonight. Lord God, truly it was encouraging to me that I even need to go deeper. And Lord God, when we go deeper, Lord God, we know that you'll be pleased. 
Lord God, our prayer is that we not just be hearers of your word, but help us to be doers.